Hello, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new. My name is Laura, and this video is going to be a try a chapter type of vlog, where I'm going to read the first chapter of all the books on my fall TBR to help me figure out which one I want to read first. <laughs> Now, technically, I've actually finished one book from my fall TBR, and that was Solo by Kwame Alexander. This is a five-star book. I'm not going to talk about it in this video, though. You'll have to wait and hear me gush about it in my September reading wrap-up video later on. But I still have 10 different books that are options for this try a chapter vlog from my fall TBR. Let me just run through the 10 books that we're going to try the first chapter for in this video really quickly. We have The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix, Cleopatra and Frankenstein by Coco Mellers, The September House by Carissa Orlando, The Four Winds by Kristen Hanna, Autumn by Ali Smith, The Dead Romantics by Ashley Poston, what Moves the Dead by T. Kingfisher, The Traveling Cat Chronicles by Hiro Arikawa, Gone for Gouda by Karina Moss, and So Thirsty by Rachel Harrison. I know that the Try a Chapter vlog has been done by lots of other booktubers, but let me just explain for you the way that I'm going to do it. I will read the first chapter of the book, and then I will rate that first chapter on a 1 to 10 scale for my initial intrigue, meaning how much did that first chapter make me want to continue reading in the story. And then after I've read the first chapter in all 10 of these books and given it a rating, then probably the highest, I would imagine the highest rating book, the book that I'm most intrigued to continue with reading, will be the book that I read for the rest of this vlog. So I'm only gonna be reading one book, but to figure out which book that's going to be, it's going to be based just on the first chapter vibes alone. So let's get started. I think I wanna start with Gone for Gouda by Karina Moss. It's a cozy mystery. I'll let you know more after I've started the first chapter. finish the first chapter of Gone for Gouda. This is so cute. This is the second book in the Cheese Shop Mysteries by Karina Moss and I absolutely loved the first one and the main reason that I loved it is because I love the characters so much. I really love the main character Willa so of course she's also the main character in this book and so I just I feel like we're right back where we left off. Not just Willa, but we've got the return of so many beloved characters from the first book. And the very opening scene is this like Bavarian cheese dip with pretzels that they're taste testing in her cheese shop. And oh my goodness, I'm hungry already. I think there's a recipe for that like Bavarian cheese dip in the back of the book. The murder has not happened yet. So obviously it's a cozy mystery. A murder is going to happen. We do get introduced to a couple new characters that did not exist in the first book and I like those characters so far too. The one is like a celebrity chef I guess. She has like a cookbook and that she's selling at this event that's going to be held in Willa's shop so they're just getting ready for that and you can tell that she is kind of like one of those like diva type of celebrities which I think is going to be really fun. She has this assistant that is a little more quiet but I feel like he's going to have more to him as the story goes on. That's just my initial thought, initial feeling. I think my initial intrigue is pretty high on this. I'm going to go ahead and give it like a nine, maybe not a 10 just yet because the murder hasn't happened. I feel like as soon as that happens then I'm really gonna feel invested. The thing I love about Karina Moss is, you know, her setting and all of the characters and that is definitely still here. So this is already starting off with a bang for me. Nine out of 10 is gonna be pretty hard to beat. It's such a nice day outside that I decided to take my books and grab a drink and come sit outside and read the next few. <laughs> There's our conehead dog. The girls are playing out here too. Okay, 
the thing about Allie Smith is that she has a very distinct, unique writing voice. I think this first chapter is one that I'm honestly gonna have to read again because I felt a little lost at first. Towards the end of the chapter, I feel like I started just, I had like had just started to kind of vibe and understand the way that it's written. I also wasn't 100% sure what was happening until I got towards the end of the first chapter. But it basically starts off with this man who ends up like kind of washed up on the shore, like on the beach, and he's naked and maybe dead, or maybe it's that he's just dreaming this. There's talk about like him trying to make clothes for himself out of leaves and dead bodies washed up on the beach while other people are alive and playing on the beach. Um, I don't know what to think <laughs> really about this first chapter. I would say my initial intrigue rating though is probably gonna be pretty low. Like I would say this is probably maybe like a three. While I think it's safe to say that I'm not going to be reading this book for this vlog, I do think I want to come back and read it, but I'm going to reread that whole first chapter again. The good news is the writing, like the font itself is really big, so this book isn't going to take very long to read. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Stay tuned. Later on in the fall, I'll probably get to that one. I moved again. While it is very nice outside, it was a little too hot. The sun was a little too bright in the sun. Perfect temperature here in the shade though. I think it's like 70 degrees today. Next, I'm gonna pick up The Traveling Cat Chronicles by Hiro Arikawa. This one is a 10 out of 10 for my initial intrigue. Like, no notes, no questions asked. This is just so cute. Obviously about a cat and his relationship with this man that kind of takes ownership of him. So it's a stray cat who has no name and the cat has like a voice, like the main voice that we're getting is in the head of the cat. The cat doesn't necessarily like speak to the human where the human can understand it, but we can understand the cat's thoughts and everything that he thinks. The cat has several funny lines just in this first chapter alone. I am really, really loving this so far. I think it's gonna have a sad, storyline or a sad twist at some point kind of based on some foreshadowing that goes on in the first chapter but I just really love the connection already that's been established in just the first chapter between this man and this cat. The author did a fantastic job with that. This is translated from um, Japanese and I think the translation is is wonderful like it's just beautiful. It's giving me what I really wanted from remarkably bright creatures actually because I loved Marcellus the octopus and my only like critique of that book was that I wanted more in Marcellus's heads and and in his head and more of his interactions with Tova and I think that we're gonna get a lot more of that based on the first chapter of this book if not I might be a little disappointed but if it continues in this pattern I am gonna absolutely love this book I can just tell Sometimes you just know. So 10 out of 10. This could be the book that we're reading for this vlog, but I still have a Grady Hendrix over there. So you never know. I guess if it's a tie and we have more than one 10 out of 10, I'm just going to have to flip a coin and decide. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see if it gets there. Let's move on to the next one. And the next one is going to be What Moves the Dead by T. Kingfisher. <laughs>
let's talk about this one. I actually had already read the first chapter of this book before this video. In fact, I would say this kind of is what inspired this idea to do a try a chapter because I first read Solo by Kwame Alexander and absolutely loved it. And then I tried to go into this one. And I don't know if that was just like such a drastic shift in like the writing style and the voice and like tone and I just wasn't feeling it like I just wasn't feeling super intrigued to read it the first time I read this first chapter. Now I would actually say now that I'm like sitting outside kids are all inside it's nice and quiet nothing but like the rooster crowing every once in a while um to like that <laughs> um I think I could just like focus on it better. And I do really like this first chapter. It's very creepy, gives off like very like gothic vibes. The main character, Alex, is on the way to the Usher house um, where he got a letter from a friend that he hasn't seen in a long time asking him to come. And there's a discussion in here that maybe that person is ill. And so he shows up, he's riding on his horse, he gets to right outside or near the Usher house and things just kind of don't look right. Everything has this kind of dark, eerie feeling to it. There's like these mushrooms that just look really weird and smell really weird, just kind of odd surroundings. And so you can tell like the tone is just, it's really actually kind of, kind of really cool the next time I read this. So. With that being said, the first time I read this, I wasn't really feeling it. My intrigue is a lot higher now. I would say it's still only probably at like a seven. So I don't think I'm ready for it. I'll probably read something else for this vlog, but it's nice to know because that's a much higher intrigue than I was initially feeling for this book. And this has been like really highly anticipated because I love Edgar Allan Poe and obviously already with me talking about like the Usher house and things like that. This is a retelling of Poe's The Fall of the House of Usher. And so I really like the dark, mysterious, everything looks like it's either dead or dying type of like vibe. So I'm glad that I read that first chapter again and gave it a second chance. You just never know. Like sometimes you're just not in the mood for a book. Doesn't mean that you won't be able to get there and get in the mood for a book. So I am excited to read this as fall still, which is which is good. That's kind of the goal of this book to make sure that I'm actually excited to read most of these books that are on my TBR. Now we're gonna switch gears like pretty drastically again and go to The Dead Romantics by Ashley Poston. location again I'm now in like my normal reading spot which is in my bedroom <laughs> um, I'm reading the dead romantics first thoughts on the dead romantics is that I think I'm gonna like this main character first of all because she's kind of that like hot mess like really trying to get her life together but really struggling at the same time you know like she's showing up late for a meeting with her new editor things haven't been going very well so the main character um florence day florence is a ghost writer for a very famous like they kind of compare the the author that she's a ghost writer for to stephen king so like that level of fame as far as like authors go but the author that she writes for ann nichols is known for romance novels and Florence is struggling with that quite a bit because she kind of has lost her faith in love and so she really wants to write books that don't have that like fluffy, cute, happily ever after type of ending because she feels like it's not realistic and she's just really struggling to write but basically in the first chapter she meets a new editor and he's kind of this like straightforward guy that tells her like no you're gonna write a happily ever after and we need it by tomorrow. So she's really struggling with life, but she's kind of like cute and funny and quirky. Just you get the sense that like she's doing her best kind of thing. But so far, no ghosts, 
no love story, um, just kind of getting to know the character and the state of life that she's in, which is not bad, but I would say my initial intrigue for it is probably like a six. That's five books down so far that we're halfway through reading the first chapter of all 10 of these books. So let me kind of like recap where our rankings are as of right now. This is where we are ranking Traveling Cat Chronicles, Gone for Gouda, What Moves the Dead, Dead Romantics, and Autumn is last. Just so far. So we have five more books to get through. I think I'll probably be done with this vlog for tonight. I'll read the other five tomorrow and then we'll know which book I'm going to actually finish for this vlog and be able to give you a full review on. So stay tuned. I'll see you tomorrow. Still hot. Good morning. It's much earlier than I would normally be filming a video. The kids I think are all still asleep. My husband's still in bed. Um, but I wanted to get started on reading the first chapter of the other five books that we have to go through because I would really like to know what book I'm going to be reading and start reading it today. It's Sunday and we don't have a lot of plans today so I really wanted to get started on reading that. I think we are going to go see the new Beetlejuice movie tonight but other than that we don't have a lot of other plans so I'm going to start off this morning by reading the first chapter of So Thirsty. <music> chapter of this one so we have a main character who is coming up on a birthday I think it said she was like 36 seems like she's just kind of at a place where she's just going through the motions in life she doesn't seem super happy with life there's mention of a friend named Naomi she has a husband named Joel and that's about all we know so far the chapter was pretty short so it really didn't give us like a whole lot to go off of other than we know that there has been some infidelity in the past, it seems like her husband maybe has cheated on her in the past, and now he's booked a surprise weekend getaway for a girl's weekend for her and her friend Naomi to go and hang out together in this cottage. Seems like a really nice gesture, but also she's a little suspicious, I think probably because of the past infidelity in their marriage. She doesn't really like surprises. She doesn't know what to think about this. I think this might just be one of those books where it takes a few chapters before you really get sucked in. I'm gonna put my initial intrigue, honestly, at like a four based on what I read. I don't know, I just, I think it was too short is probably the main problem that it just didn't give me much time to feel like super invested in the characters. That being said, I'm gonna move on to the next one and see what we think about The Four Winds by Kristen Hanna. torn on this one honestly so this first chapter of this book felt like halfway setting up the setting it's in 1921 I think so before the Great Depression hits they're talking about how automobiles are replacing horse and carriages the the main character's family is wealthy and prosperous you know just the town itself everybody's in good spirits and businesses are booming kind of thing. Everybody's kind of like celebrating the end of World War One, and you know the farmers are proud of the hand that they played in that with you know being able to grow the wheat. So half of it was about that and that part I was really interested in but then there was a lot of talk of our main character Elsa. The only thing that I know about her just in this first chapter is that she has had a couple of major illnesses in her life that sort of have sealed her fate to the point that she's now a 25 year old woman living at home with her parents unmarried and that in that time crazy to think about now but that 
at that time, that kind of meant that you were doomed to be alone for the rest of your life. Elsa's just, you know, really feeling, I think, feelings of like isolation, feeling like she has no one. Her family doesn't want her to go off and leave. They don't think she's well enough. They really kind of like, honestly, kind of still treat her like a child, even though she's 25 years old. So she just seems very unhappy, very sad. She does want to change. So there's that. I don't know. I'm not like super invested in it just yet. I think this is a very long book. And so we'll probably get a whole lot more about Elsa. Hopefully it gets beyond the point of just describing her as like sick and unattractive because that's what we've focused on a lot in this first chapter for her. For right now, it's a 5 out of 10. We'll move along to the next one, which is going to be The September House by Carissa Orlando. <laughs> excited to say that the September house is off to a fantastic start. I am loving everything about this so far. I love the creepy setting. I love the writing style. It's a, gonna be like a very fast easy read but so entertaining I think at the same time and it is super campy. The other advantage this one might have for the first chapter is the length of it because I am like 30 pages into the book with having just read the prologue and the first chapter alone. So I feel like I have a quite a bit more sense of the story and where it might be going compared to some of the others that I've started. If you don't know, The September House is about a woman and her husband who find this beautiful Victorian style home. It's kind of hard to show you because of my lighting, but this beautiful like Victorian home. And they are the type of people that had never had a chance to own their own home before. They had rented homes and apartments and had just been kind of this transient family throughout their relationship. They now have an adult daughter that they've raised and she's kind of moved on. And so they find this Victorian home that is at a steal of a price, but in the prologue, the realtor's like, oh, and by the way, people have died here. And the couple is just like so like dismissive of it. You know, they're like, oh, well, that's to be expected, but look at the closets, wow. You know, like they're just so in love with the idea and the concept of having this beautiful home that they're willing to look past all of these huge red flags in their face. And it's just very campy, very funny honestly. At the same time, it's extremely disturbing because once it gets into the first chapter, we find that the main character, I forget her name already. It's told in the first person. I think it's Margaret. So Margaret and Hal are the, are, is the couple that have moved in and the month of September, things get really weird. Like the house is haunted. We get full-fledged ghosts um, that are like floating around and doing things in the house throughout the year, but the month of September apparently gets incredibly crazy. And we've just, I feel like probably scratched the surface of that in this first chapter, but I love the way that it just dove right into it. I mean, page one of chapter one, blood is dripping from the walls and just super creepy vibes, but campy at the same time. The prologue is about them buying the house and chapter one is like after they've lived in the house for some years. And the wife is now the only one living there because the husband is gone. He apparently had had enough and he's like, I'm leaving. I feel like this is going to be a really fun, wild time. My intrigue is like super high. So I wanna say this is probably a nine. I think my only hesitation is that it started off with like such a bang. I kind of already feel like I know where the story is going. We'll see. I may be completely off in my thinking there, but I'm going to say it's like a nine for sure. So super high intrigue for this one. Next, I'm going to move on to Cleopatra and Frankenstein by Coco Mellers.
after one is done and this is like probably one of the cutest first meetings between a romance couple that I've ever read. I just love this right from the beginning. It goes right into Cleo and Frank meeting for the first time at a New Year's Eve party or just as they're leaving a New Year's Eve, Eve party rather. And he walks her home through the city of New York and they just get to know each other and just their conversation like it just feels so easy and natural. It's just clear that these two are, you know, are going to have a, a interesting relationship together. Probably not a perfect one because they get into like their first little minor disagreement on the very first meeting. But overall, I really like the characters so far. I'm, I'm interested to see where their love journey takes them. There's some talk about like mental health things um and so i think that's gonna be maybe a part of this cleo is british and frank is american and they're in new york but there's talk at the end from cleo about how she doesn't want to get too attached to him because she has to leave in a few months so yeah i'm curious to see where where their relationship's going to take them i will say though like it's a pretty long book and like I don't know, plot wise, I'm just curious like if this is gonna be entertaining enough the whole way through. But I would say initial intrigue is definitely high there for this couple. So I would give this probably like an eight, surprisingly. My husband's in the bathroom talking very loudly on the phone, if you can hear him in the background. Anyway, so eight for this one. Last but I'm sure not least, we're gonna do the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. now read the first chapter in all 10 of these books including this one um what do i think about this first of all there is like an author's note at the very beginning of this that i really love because he references my best friend's exorcism which i just read over the summer and how he wrote this book after that one because my best friend's exorcism in that book the parents kind of get like a bad rap but that was intentional because that's it's kind of how teenagers view their parents when they're at that stage in life and that's intentional because the parents job is to try to protect their kids so they might be dealing with their own things while their teenagers are dealing with things so the parents might come off a certain type of way but it's just because they're trying to protect their kids this is the book that he wrote more from like the parents point of view it's set in the same neighborhood but it's not like it's not a sequel so you don't really have to read them in order but I would say that if you've never read Grady Hendrix before, it seems like that would be the order that makes the most sense to read my best friend's exorcism first and then this one. I love the author's note. I love the prologue. And then the first chapter, we're introduced to, I think, what's going to be our main character, Patricia, and the group of ladies in her community that she's in this book club with. The problem is that Patricia is supposed to be hosting a discussion for the book club that night, but it's a book that she never got around to reading. It's Cry the Beloved Country, and she knows nothing about it. But that's because, as the book points out, that she had her kids to look after, keeping up with the house and her mother-in-law and helping out her husband and just trying to do the best that she can, but, you know, being pulled in a ton of different directions as all parents are. So I just think that I'm going to find this character super relatable. A parent not being able to find the time to read, huh? sounds familiar <laughs> especially when my kids were younger and I think she's got like some younger kiddos so yeah um not a lot has happened honestly other than that like book club scene we do get Grady's like sense of both heart and humor that being said I will be very fair and say that my intrigue is high um because of the relatable ness to the characters and like kind of the whole setup at the beginning but it's not like a perfect 10. So I'm actually going to put this at an 8. So yeah, just when you think you know me and you think that I'm super obsessed with this author, <laughs> you're not wrong. But also, I do have other interests. So let me show you how this all ended up stacking up. Here's how it stacked up. So we have The Traveling Cat Chronicles, September House, Gone for Gouda, 
the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, then Cleopatra and Frankenstein, What Moves the Dead, The Dead Romantics, The Four Winds, So Thirsty, and Autumn. So we officially have a winner. I'm gonna finish reading The Traveling Cat Chronicles. I will check in with you when I'm just like a few more chapters in and let you know how it's going, give you an update. Um, but first, I'm going to like take a break from the reading, get some things done around the house, shower, change clothes, and all of that, and then hopefully I'll have some time to read. I do have some like video editing to do as well though, so anyway, I'll, I'll catch up with you when I've read a few more chapters. ready to go see Beetlejuice but I wanted to update you on the Traveling Cat Chronicles because it really isn't divided into chapters actually I just got lucky that the first part of it is only about like I don't know I think it was like 15 or so pages um, so now I'm on the second part and it just kind of like it has a lot of breaks in the page but it's not like true chapters anyway so I'm about like I don't know somewhere around 60 pages in and I thought I would keep a cry count for this book because so far I'm at one already. Um, we're kind of at, at the end of like the first part or what I thought was like the first chapter we have the cat Nana and the main character Satoru. Nana was a stray, Satoru kind of took him in but then at the first part ends with Satoru saying something unexpected has happened and he can no longer keep the cat so he's on this journey in this second part to meet up with a childhood friend of his to see if he would be willing to take the cat from him and so we're getting a lot of like the backstory of their childhood now so it's kind of going back and forth between like flashbacks of when they were kids and building up their friendship but we are still getting like the voice of Nana the cat who is very sassy and very sweet. I just, I really enjoy whenever it's the cat's perspective. But I'm also really liking the friendship building. So cry count is one so far. Um, something sad does happen in like the childhood backstory. I have a feeling it's not going to be the last time that I cry in this book. So I'm going to finish doing my makeup and we're going to go eat dinner and see the movie. Um, so yeah, I'll update you again, maybe the next time I cry, <laughs> or, you know, a little further into the book. It is quite some time later, and I have finished reading The Traveling Cat Chronicles. I don't have it with me anymore because I had to take it back to the library, but it is a five-star book. Um, I think the cry count ended up being like a two and a half is what I would say. Two times where I actually cried and had like tears down my face. Not like bawling hysterically. It didn't wreck me in the way that some books have where I'm just like really crying hard. <laughs> um, and then one time where I just kind of got like teary eyed, I teared up a little bit but it was, it's so good. If you like character driven stories and you're not afraid um, of, you know, a book that explores the topic of grief and kind of making peace with your past. Um, it's it's kind of a lot about that and, and the very cute relationship between the cat and his owner. I loved the cat's voice. We got that, you know, pretty consistently the whole way through. There's a sad part of the book towards the end, but I would say that it ends on a very hopeful note. And so it was a little bit hard for me to read. Um, I haven't shared it, I don't think, on here. I think I shared it on my Instagram. Um, so some of you may know, but my dad passed away um, not long before I started reading this book. But even though I'm so freshly dealing with grief myself, I really loved the points that this book was trying to make. It may even be that I loved it even more so because I'm currently going through some of those things. And it does end on like a, a note of like hope and hopefulness and yeah that's all I want to share because I don't want to give away too many of the plot points although it is like it's kind of one of those books where you kind of know where this story is going the entire time but some of the other characters don't know what's 
gonna happen at the end if that makes sense so without getting too spoilery <laughs> um which I don't want to do for you guys I would definitely recommend it obviously I loved it five stars easy um and I'm glad that I did this little try chapter if you like this concept let me know in the comments because I could do it again for like my winter or spring or summer TBRs as well I have switched to doing like a seasonal TBR rather than an every month TBR and give myself just a little more flexibility, especially with the things that I've been going through lately. Um, that's just where I needed to be. I know my videos have been more sporadic and that's just, that's a big reason why, honestly. So yeah, thanks for hanging in there with me. Thanks for watching the video and just say hi down in the comments if you want to. I'll see you guys again next time. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.